Welcome to the Mighty Dragon. Today's guest is another actor from Frasier, Jimmy Dunn. Jimmy plays Moose, a firefighter friend of Freddy's, and according to the Christmas episode, a love interest to Olivia. This new series has been fantastic, and I am delighted that Jimmy, a seasoned stand-up comic and actor, had time to jump on the Mighty Dragon to talk Moose and more. All right, I'm good. Let's do it. Great. Welcome yes. to the Mighty Dragon, Jimmy Dunn. Thank Dan. you for having me. Great. Great to see you here. I've got a few questions about Frasier, of sure. course. And But what I want to do is start off with how, you know, how did you start becoming an actor and getting into the whole acting game? Sure. Yeah. I, um, I don't, I wasn't really trying to be an actor. I <laughs> found my way into the back of a comedy club at one point. And ah. when I found out that they were actually paying people to tell jokes and make people laugh and that you could make a living doing that, that was, that was it. I was like, yeah. oh, I'm, I'm going to do this. And so I started doing stand up, and that just led me to all the other worlds of show business but uh but it really started just in the back of a bar just trying wow. to get a, make a few dollars and get a few beers and and maybe meet a few women you know that was the game <laughs> <laughs> Superb. well you're honest is that something you've always wanted to do since you were a kid meet women yes <laughs> oh so, um i don't i was always a fan of comedy uh yeah i don't know that i i i you know my first memory of going oh that's me being a comedian was when i was in uh junior high school and i had to do oral reports like book reports yeah i would i would intentionally put jokes in them to make the class laugh and the teacher would right. get upset and i just loved that i yes. just thought it was the funniest and that was the coolest so that's kind of where it started but as a kid i you listen listen to all the you know the comedy albums george carlin and i love cheech and chong oh and yeah I just, I just loved the world of comedy. I didn't really think, oh, I'm going to do this. I was, I guess I was kind of studying it, but then, um, I just happened to find my way. I was working in a bank. I was completely rudderless and they started doing comedy next door. And I went over there and started, uh, diving into that world. And that, that was it. That was Fantastic. It. Who, who were kind of like your, you mentioned Cheech and Chon, who, who are your stand up heroes? My, my stand up heroes are people that you've, probably never heard of but they're boston comedians that started this whole boston thing back in yeah. the day uh guys like don gavin and lenny clark and steve sweeney um and they didn't really go on to become big national uh well they've, they've done a lot of national stuff but they didn't become super super famous but yeah. they taught, they taught me how to do it and how to go into a club and not be afraid to not get a laugh and how to yeah. get up on that stage and, and get kind of fearless and take charge of it. And they, they really had a thing going here back in the day. And it was, it was amazing to watch. They were like pirates. Yeah. They would come in and they would rip up the crowd and make everybody laugh and drink all the booze and take all the money <laughs> and then leave with the guy's sister. And you go, Oh my God, what just happened? <laughs> but that was the Boston comedy scene. Yeah. Right? Hey, and, and I was a young pup watching this going, oh, I went in on this crazy world. Yes. And would you say the Boston humor is very unique to America? I think so. Yeah. The, yeah. The East Coast, there's sort of East Coast, West Coast thing, but the East Coast Boston humor is very in your face, very aggressive yeah. oh, um, right. and, and fast. Back then, I mean, you had to be so you had to have a punchline every three seconds because right. uh, the attention span in Boston was just like, we want the jokes now. We want them now. Yeah. So you had to be right. very aggressive and funny. Yeah. Wow. Right. I've always thought that it must be very similar to British humor in a way, the way that it is on that side of the coast. You know, I, I don't know a whole lot about British humor. I, I am told that I have a lot of friends that have gone over there to do stand up, and I right. told that, it, that it's got it. There, there's, there's a wonderful stand up scene over there. Yeah. And I'm kind of hoping that maybe some of this uh, Fraser exposure will lead me to be able to go do that because I know this show is real popular over there. Yes. Um, so I'm going to I'm gonna explore that. But uh, yeah, I a lot of friends, my buddy Patrice O'Neill used to, used to be a big name over there. Um, right. and, and he used to speak really highly of it. Like he loved it over there. So oh, great. Something, I de something I definitely want to explore for sure. Fantastic. So we know you as Moose in Frasier. Yeah. What do you like about this character? 
Oh, it's me. It's <laughs> it's it's so me. It's it's amazing how uh so first of all, it's you know, as the show takes place in Boston, I have yes, I, I have a very heavy Boston accent, and I right. not only can I not get rid of it, I don't really try to get rid of it. It's sort of my that's my thing. I I am I, I it's me. And right. when were looking for moose, and I saw the description, and I was like, "Oh, this is a big, <laughs> goofy firefighter from Boston. This is yeah. This, this is my uncle Riddy. This is yeah. like I, I know this guy." And so right. when I saw that, I was like, "Oh, I, I, I man, I hope I can get this." So it, yeah. it's um, my my uncles were firefighters. My some of my dad's best oh. friends were firefighters, and I used to spend an awful lot of time in a, in a firehouse when I was a kid. Uh, right. after basketball practice and stuff, I go over there and hang out with my uncles and they feed me. So I know that life and I know those guys. And when I yeah. saw that, and, and when I saw that, and, and also it's from Boston and he's really funny. And the, the, the writers are just, the, the lines are so funny. Oh, oh I, I this, amazing. This is the dream gig. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Can you share any funny behind the scenes moments from Frasier? Um, behind the scenes. So I've been on a few uh, sitcoms before, but this yeah. one's more, this one behind the scenes is, is very business. Um, I mean, you're talking about some of the best, I mean, Kelsey's is one of the best to ever do it. And yeah. he, he knows exactly what he's doing. And then, um, and Nick Lindhurst, man, he's yeah. just so, so it's not, I've been on shows where it's very goofy and there's a lot of goofing around and, and there's not a lot of that here. It, is I will say this the the shoot day when we get to put this thing up in front of 250 people that is just magic and I have yes. I've been able to do stand up and been in some really cool places where people were laughing at me I got to do the Letterman show I was on a Conan oh, show right. I, I, I've I've experienced some really cool laughs yeah but that laugh of 250 people laughing while while you're sitting in a bar in Boston. Yeah, I mean, I mean, moose. I mean, there's nothing cooler. It's, oh, fantastic! It's it's just amazing. Yeah. Now, how do you prepare for a new character and immerse yourself in that role? Uh, well, so I, my character when I get to do a character, it's it's usually a lot of me, you know. Yeah. And, and uh, we have uh, we, I got a friend of mine. We have an expression in this book. We say, you know, you're either the guy or you're not the guy. You can right. You can add certain elements to it but and i'm not I, i'm one of the few people on the show that literally didn't go to juilliard or harvard and study i mean these are master craftsmen that i'm working with uh, right and i learned how to be funny in the back of a pizza joint you know like I, <laughs> that's how i know how to but i can get a laugh i know how to do yes. that yeah um so when i you know when i saw this one and and usually most of the things that I get offered, there's a giant chunk of me in it already. Right. Um, but when I saw this, the one thing that I did notice was very early on, Kelsey made a note that it was a joke that that maybe he wasn't too bright, that Moose wasn't too bright in a firefighting situation. And Kelsey was like, no, 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 no. He is a he is an excellent firefighter and right. very knowledgeable about that. It's the rest of his world that might get a little goofy. And so right. I, I took that and I was like, okay, so this, th he's a real serious firefighter when it, when it comes down, you know, yes. uh, which is a lot like my uncle was, you know, and, 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 but he was also a goofball most of the rest of the time. Oh, that's so nice. And what challenges have you faced in your career so far and how did you overcome them? Hmm. Well, one of the challenges is that I live 3000 miles away from Hollywood uh, right. So that's and I chose to live here. I love living on the East Coast, and I I, ah. I I have a wonderful life here. I do stand up all over. I'm always traveling doing stand up, but that does take me out of that game out there a lot. Um, fortunately, things have changed in that business where you can do a lot of self tape stuff now. Certainly for the first couple of rounds of auditions. Yes. And I've built a little bit of a reputation out there, so people know when they're looking for you know, a certain character like Moose that they could call me. And, and, and also I've made it very clear to agents and directors and you know, call me, I'll be there in six hours. It's, it's not a, it's yeah. not a long flight. It's uh it's a half a day. I can get out there, but that's one of the biggest challenges. And then the other one is this, this obvious accent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going away. And I, 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 I will go down with it. I love it. <laughs> 
Yeah, that's great. Are there any dream roles or projects that you aspire to be part of in the future? Dream now, for roles, a comedian, I, I would, would you like, like something be, dark? I'd like to be Batman, but a Boston yes. Batman. Boston <laughs> Batman. <laughs> Oh. Boston Batman. He wants to fight crime, but there's nowhere to park. Um, I don't, you know, I, I mean, this is going to sound corny and, but I, this is, I have this gig that I just did, you know, on Frasier is something I grew up watching cheers. Cheers. I was, yeah. cheers was the greatest sitcom I ever watched, you know, and I love cheers. And Halfway through this last season, I'm in a scene with Kelsey here and and BB here, and I'm going, this is surreal. Crazy. So, <laughs> a- anytime you're working out there is a dream gig, but to be for a stand up comic, a sitcom is the deal. You know, we want to be there in front of that live audience. We want to get those live laughs, right? And, and something like this with Frazier. I mean, I never in a million years did I think I would I would end up uh, getting onto something like this. So it, this is yeah. A yeah. I always think that comedians make the best villains, though. Would you go down the dark, in a dark genre, like a horror? Yeah, but again, like if you do that, you need some really good acting chops, you know. And I got one speed, and it's funny and goofy. That's it. Yeah. That's ah. so, <laughs> never say never. Um, I mean, I could. I could yeah. try. And I audition. I, I audition for anything that I might fit. I'll, you know, my agent will send it over. Yeah, I'll give it a shot. Yeah. But this is my wheelhouse is, is punchlines, you know. and. And I'm right. really lucky. Like when I do stand up, I'm writing a lot. You know, I'm writing it myself. But right. with, with this, it's a dozen or so of the best writers in all of Hollywood, and they're writing jokes for Moose. It's it's pretty cool. That, uh, I think the writing on Frasier is some of the the best so writing, good. So and, good. and also the the last series of Frasier and Cheers as well. Yeah. And I was saying to your colleague uh, Rene. Uh, Pazota, who oh, yeah, I yeah, interviewed yeah. the other day, Smokey, and yeah, we're great. just saying it's just such superior writing that it translates really well internationally as well. Yeah, that's a that's a new thing for me. So I was on yeah. I was on another sitcom on CBS uh, seven or eight years ago, and we we only had the one season thing, and it was great, and it was really cool, and yeah, an amazing experience. But uh, Frasier comes with eleven seasons of. Uh, a built-in audience, 10 seasons, yes. of, a, of a built-in audience, 10 or 11. I should know that. But, I mean, it's got, it's legendary. And yeah. his character is so, he is so good at what he does. And yeah. and then on top of that, he, it, Kelsey directs a lot of the episodes too. Does so he really? I, I would, oh, yeah. So yeah. I, was that I got, I got two episodes uh, 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 we were in, the firefighters were in. We got um, uh, James Barrows directing us, which was insane. And then uh, three more with Kelsey, which it was just, I learned so much just from those, just from those weeks with him and yeah. watching a script at the beginning of the week and watching him tweak it and find where the funny is. And then the writers add layers to it. And then they bring in the audience, they put the lights up and then the cameras and boom, yeah. you make it funny. Renee was saying that they do change it quite a bit. They can just change it like, oh, we're going to rewrite that section. Yeah, it happens a lot. And, and yeah. Uh, it's a really neat process to watch the the first table read. You, you usually get the script the day before and you're going through it and you're looking at it. All right, this is great. And then you go in and read it and you can see the parts that are really great. And then you can yeah. see some parts like, oh, maybe there could be. A, and you can see the writers going, all oh, right, there, there's a better joke there. And you go in the next day and there's a better joke there. And it builds through the week. As you right. rehearse it, they see it and they go, oh, it could be better there or maybe this is too much. And you watch it, find the jokes, you watch it, find the heart. And yeah, and then you and then the ultimate test is to see if 250 people laugh at it. And yeah. and on the occasion that they don't, the writers will huddle up and in two minutes they got something else and they go, Jimmy, try this. And, and, and you try that and that gets a laugh and you go, oh, this is just this is going to yeah. come together. Yeah. I guess as a stand-up comic, you're so in tune with that audience. And is there any a time that you think that a joke has gone much better than you thought or not as well as you thought and has surprised you? You know, I have learned when you tape something and you get, you know, you know the taping goes well. Mm. But I've also learned there, there are a hundred reasons why a joke doesn't make it into the final edit. 
And sometimes it's performance. Sometimes uh-huh. it's the joke, but a lot of times it's just timing. Maybe the camera angle doesn't line up with something. Um, it, but most of the time it's just, hey, the show's too long and you got to cut. And right. the, the cool thing about being a stand-up comic is when I'm writing, I can do whatever I want. I could go as long as I want most of the time, you know. But yeah. when, you, when you're doing these sitcoms, you see a lot of good jokes go out. Of, what happened to that joke? I just it's, It didn't make it. Didn't make yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Um, what advice would you give to anyone? entering the industry uh to enter the the to get if you want to get into sitcoms i mean it's it's all there you can study it's all you can watch it's they're everywhere i mean you can watch anything if you're into it study it watch it but the coolest education is to go sit at a taping and watch a show good one or bad and watch them put it together and and watch, you know, four hours turn into 22 minutes. It's, it's, it's wow. really, it's, it's <laughs> yeah. the coolest thing to watch though. Like it, when, when, when I, every time I drive through the gates of Paramount and I, and I get on that sound stage and you, you look around and there are plaques everywhere and you're like, that's where they shot King Kong and that's where they shot cheers and that's where yeah, they shot yeah. wings and you go, it, it's, it's, but you can take a tour there and learn all that stuff. You can there are podcasts about all of it. Um, yeah. But the the best way to learn about sitcoms is to go watch them being taped and and see that whole process. And then the other thing that you can do is you can find scripts and grab a script and physically watch it, read it as you're watching the show. Right. That's a really, that's a really cool exercise too. Um, yeah. When I started, when I was really young, I went out to UCLA to take some writing classes uh, on how to write sitcoms. Because at one point, I thought that was what I wanted to do. Yeah. Um, and I ended up doing a little bit of that, but I but I went out there uh, and took those classes on sitcom writing. And when you sort of put yourself in the shoes of the writer, if you know more about how they put that script together, sometimes that can help you with your performance. You you, you know what they're trying uh. to get. At. Uh, so, I mean, as far as sitcoms go, they're, they're not making as many as they used to, but the ones that they're making, it's, it's a really cool experience to go watch. And I I hope it, you know, hope it goes on for a long time. Yeah. What would you say that you've learned working with someone like Kelsey Grammer? What do you learn from him? Oh, he's just the coolest. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I've been a fan since the first time he stepped on the stage at, at, at Cheers, you know? I've all, I've been a huge fan. I was a huge fan of his of of the first go round of his show, um, and I didn't know what to expect when I met him. Yeah, and, he, and he's he's j- just so uh, just a cool guy, but also very giving uh, as a director. He really know. I mean, he obviously knows what he's doing. But yeah. The the Christmas episode, um, I had a lot of action in there, and he gave me a lot yeah. of direction. And it was, it was so cool. I mean, he just teach me subtle little things and just what you watch people like Kelsey and Nick Lindhurst and, and Tokes and Jess. I mean, they're just absolute pros on that show. And sometimes I get wrapped up. I'm in a scene that I'm in and I'm, I'm watching more than I'm acting. And you got to go, Hey, Hey, you're in this. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but I'm watching a master class, you know. Yeah, Jack, yeah. I mean, Jack Cutmore Scott is so, so good. As, yeah. Uh, yeah, as Freddie, he's amazing. And uh, and even David Anders, it, it, it's Anders' first real big gig, so it's really cool to watch yeah. a young kid doing this too, you know. Yeah. It's all an education, and it's – it's, it's yeah. I, pitch, I pitch myself every time I'm standing on that on that stage. Did you feel, like, quite a lot of pressure going into the show, like – just with its back history and everything, did you see? Oh, geez. I, you know, so I got I got cast sort of late, real late in the process. I didn't have a lot of time to think about it. Right, and that's a good thing. Really, that's a, it was a good thing. Yeah, it was. <laughs> yeah, and I wasn't. I, the table read went really well. I wasn't really nervous because I know how a week goes with a show, um, and I wasn't super nervous about it because it's it's a great character for me. I know, I know the the lines are really funny. I got a few yeah. really really good laughs coming up. Like I had all of that, but then you get to tape night, 
And, you know, they're an hour in before our scene starts. And so they bring the firefighters into the bar and they're walking us in and they're playing music to keep the audience entertained and they're playing shipping up to Boston and they're playing the theme to cheers. And I'm just <laughs> oh. around and I see my wife up with the audience and I'm like, <laughs> Oh man, this is just so cool. So, yeah. I was, you know, I had to be like, Hey, focus, you big dummy. You got to yes. get some jokes in. <laughs> yeah. But I think you mentioned the Christmas episode. That was just brilliant. I loved it so much. So and well Moose, done. Moose is going places, right? So maybe we'll see. We don't know, but uh yeah, we'll see. It was um certainly a surprise when I read the script, but it's uh it's <laughs> yeah. great that the writers it's it's great that the writers think of me for that and uh and 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 know that I could pull it off. Um, brilliant. And and it, it went pretty well. So uh you know, we'll yeah. see. I yeah, I'm, I the, I was very I was as surprised as you were. <laughs> yeah, it, that was a real plot twist. That one I wasn't yeah. seeing that coming. Yeah. Um, what? So, what's your plans for twenty twenty four? Uh my plans for twenty twenty four. So, my plan is always stand up comedy. That's what I do for a living. Right. Um, and I'll do shows all over the country. Uh, that's I go around the country. I'll go to a comedy club for a few days, back home, then to another club. So I I do a lot of that. Um, I've been writing a lot of new material and uh, I got a big new year show here in New Hampshire where I live. And so uh, right. I'll, I'll, I'll do that on new year's and then um, we'll see what happens with, uh, with this. Hopefully there's, there's, hopefully there are more episodes of Frasier to come and uh, hopefully yes. there'll, be, there'll be more moose in it, but uh, everything that I've been able to be a part of already over there is, is, is such a bonus that I'm just, uh, I'm just happy to be part of it. Oh, wonderful. Thank you so much for jumping on the podcast. My pleasure. And, Thanks uh, for being a fan. Yeah. Oh, no. Fantastic. I cannot wait for the next series. Honestly, all the very yeah. best of luck you and with me both. all Thank of it. You. <laughs> Thanks, Jimmy. And hopefully right. see you soon. Bye. Thank you, Victoria. Bye. Bye. Thank you for supporting the podcast this year. All the best for Christmas and 2024. See you next year.